So this is a short video designed to show you how to use the tween machine, which is a really super useful tool created by uh, Justin Barrett. It's a plugin for Maya, and it allows you to break down uh, your shots on, on stepped curves uh, and gradually break them down to do the, the breakdowns and finally even the in-betweens uh, without losing control over the curves, without your animation going all spliny. Uh, and let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got a shot here, uh, which, and I'm just going to turn off the um, visibility. There's a handy little plug-in also from Justin Barrett, which allows you to toggle off the, uh, the visibility on a character on and off. Of course, you can always do it here under Show, uh, just turn off the NURBS curves there, but it's nice to be able to do it with one click. So this is a shot that I've set up. Uh, we've got Morpheus here in a phone booth. He picks up a telephone. It's three poses, one, two, three. So it's Morpheus picks up the phone, Morpheus puts the phone to his ear, and then he reacts. So it's a sort of classic um, short three-pose shot kind of thing that you might be expected to do on a feature film as a junior animator. Um, and I've got a, a, a set here, a free download, the phone box is from Turbo Squid. Um, if I hit spacebar, um, and let me just zoom out a little bit and turn off the set, because it's always useful to have your, your set on a, on a layer. Um, uh, and actually what I'll do, what I can go ahead and do is um, add the um, phone booth to the layer as well, so we can get rid of that too. So if I go to phone booth, and then let's just put that on the BG layer, add selected objects, and now that goes off as well. So now if I um, toggle off the visibility on Morpheus, I can see that, um, uh, let's just zoom out. And make sure select surface objects is turned on. Turn those curves back on again. Select all the curves. Press A in the graph editor. And you can see, there we go, I've got a key pose there, a key pose at 125, and a key pose at 149. So it's basically one pose per second. Now, of course, what I can do with my animation here is I can spline these curves by, by selecting them and splining them here using the... Um, uh, spline button. The problem with that is that I get animation that looks like this. Right? It's terrible. It's just what Maya has done is 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 joined up all the dots. It's done all the in-betweens, but it's done it in a kind of mindless way. It's completely accurate. But we're asking Maya to do too much. As animators, we need to we need Maya to do more than uh, we need Maya to do less than this. We need to do more of the work ourselves, and that's where the tween machine comes in. It's a really great little tool. So first of all, I want to turn the tween machine on. And I've got a little button here uh, which activates the tween machine. You will need to download it. So let me show you where you find it. So if I go to the Animation Apprentice blog, you'll see a little blog post here about how to use it. And you'll see full instructions on how to download and install the tween machine. And a link to Justin Barrett's website where he kindly um, explains how to use this thing um, and, and how to uh, get hold of your copy. It's free, very kind. Thank you, Justin Barrett. Um, and you, all you have to do is follow the steps there. I'm not going to go through it because <coughs> there are videos already on how to install it. But let's assume that you've got it installed and you can see here that you get this slider. So what I can do is select Morpheus and let's say that I want to favor um, I want to, well, let's say that I want to do a pose at frame 113. So I've got a pose at 101 and 125. We always start at 101 on, on production, by the way. This is because if you want to add 10 frames to the front of your shot, you're now starting at frame 91. Whereas if you start at frame 1 and you want to add 10 frames to the front of your shot, you're starting at minus 10, which really isn't helpful. So we start at frame 101, and let's say we want to add a pose at 113, halfway between 101 and 125. But we want that pose to favor the first, uh, to favor frame one. Um, so what we do is, or actually let's have it favor the second pose, so we get into that pose earlier. So what we do is we slide this over here, and the tween machine will now automatically give us a breakdown, which is favoring the second pose. Okay, so there we go. So we've now got two pose. We've now got a breakdown pose, which is favoring frame 125. 
So now let's do another pose. Let's do one. We want poses at 105 and 109 because my goal is to get my animation onto fours because once it's on fours, I'll really be able to see the motion and see how it's working. So I'm going to now favor frame 101 and I'm going to put another breakdown in at 109, which is going to favor frame 105. Um, and let's put in a breakdown at 117, which favors the second pose. And 121, which also favors the second pose. So I've now, you can see the tween machine is, is putting in poses here. And I've now got the first second of my shot broken down. I've got breakdowns on all of these poses. Now I'm going to have to make some changes here. Everything's happening at the same time. His body is turning, uh, and his head is turning, and there's no offset on the arms. All of these things are happening at the same time. But I can get in and adjust those, those curves easily. The point is that what I've got now is everything broken down onto fours and highly adjustable. And it's not all spliny and gooey. So I can do the same thing here. So say at uh, so frame 125 is... He's listening to the phone, and then so 149 is his reaction. So let's go to frame, it's the halfway point, it's going to be 137. Um, so let's have 137 also favor 149. So all I have to do is press that there. And now 137 is favoring the reaction of Morpheus. So let's have 129, let's make that one favor 125 and 133 let's have it favor the reaction shot and then the rest here we can just ease into that final pose so now in a matter of moments I've basically blocked out my entire shot now all I have to do is start to go in and make adjustments now there's a lot of problems here um, I mean, there's a lot that needs improving, but it's relatively easy for me to do this now. So, for example, if I want to adjust Morpheus's arm so that that um, rotation, uh, so that his arm doesn't, so that when he reacts here, we could have that be a much swifter reaction. So he could kind of pull that arm up and then lower it and then ease into that final pose. So we get a reaction that's like like that. So you can see I can go in and make adjustments. And making adjustments to your animation when it's on fours actually isn't that difficult. It's really quite straightforward. Uh, and here between, between, we've got a big transition between 109 and one, um, 113. Uh, and everything's kind of happening at once. So we can offset the head so that it's not rotating nearly as fast as, say, the rest of the body is. So I can delay the head there, so that as the body comes around, the head comes around slower. So here the, the shoulders will lead, and then the head's going to come around with an offset like that. Obviously, there's a lot of extra work to do to make this a good shot. But you can see here what an incredibly powerful tool the tween machine is. And lots of animators just continue. Uh, they actually never hit spline at all. So you can go in and select all your curves and go in and then uh, set a keyframe. Um, again, let's launch the tween machine. Uh, favor frame, frame 101. Uh, let's see, 107. Let's put that one, let's make that one a midway point. Again, a midway point at 111. Uh, and you can see, once I've done this, I've basically got my work on twos. Uh, and there's really very little for spline curves to do once this is the case. So this is a way of allowing yourself to work very, very fast. The front of my shot is now going to be animated. Although uh, I would have, I, I should really have already gone in and, and made the important adjustments before doing that. So I'm actually not uh, nearly ready to um, to do that yet. So I'm just going to hit Z. Whoops. There we go. 
So let's lose those because there's still important adjustments to be made while I'm still on fours. So that is the uh, work method that I can recommend. The tween machine is a super powerful tool for doing this. Um, and if you're working on stepped curves, which you usually are if you're presenting work for a director on a, on a uh, sort of acting shots on a, on a movie or a TV series, um, this is a great little tool and a great work method.